So now we have some chapter 12 practice problems and let's look at number one. So which of the following is not a relevant cash flow and thus should not be reflected in the analysis of a capital budgeting project? So A says changes in net operating working capital. Well that one is a relevant cash flow. We include that at T equals zero and at the end. So remember we have to charge it as a cost at the beginning normally um, at t equals zero and then at the end of the project we get all of our change in net operating working capital back. And then B says shipping and installation cost for machinery acquired. Well that one is actually the shipping and installation costs are included in the depreciable basis for the machinery. So we include that because it's included in the depreciable basis. And then cannibalization effects. We do include that because one project um, might reduce the sales of another uh, particular product that the company has. So we do want to include that. And then opportunity costs are where we, if we had a building or something or machinery that could be used for some other project, we need to consider that as a cost to this project to appropriately account for it and see if even beyond that a factor does it does the project still generate extra cash flows? So we include opportunity costs in both of these answers C and D are charged as costs to the project. So we know the answer has to be E. We don't include sunk costs that have been expensed. We never include those. And then question two says the relative risk of a proposed project is best accounted for by which of the following procedures. So relative risk means that some projects are riskier than others. And so what would we do in those situations? And A says adjusting the discount rate upward if the project is judged to have above average risk. Well that's actually true. That's what we would do. So a higher risk project, we would increase the discount rate. Uh, so B says adjusting the discount rate upward if the project is judged to have below average risk. So if it, the problem is the word upward here. If it has below average risk, we would adjust the discount rate downward. And then C says reduce the MPV by 10% for risky projects. That's just like a random made up thing that I've never heard of before, but you just don't do that. And then D, picking a risk factor equal to the average discount rate. That's another random made up thing um, just that I would never think of, but that's not it. And then E, ignoring risk because project risk cannot be measured accurately. And that's not correct because even if we can't totally measure something accurately, we can compensate for extra risk by increasing the discount rate or for lower risk by decreasing the discount rate. And let's see, oops, Let me get back. Okay, so question three. So when evaluating a new project, firms should include in the projected cash flows all of the following except. So we want to find something we would not include in the whole cash flow list. So A says changes in net operating working capital attributable to the project. We want to include that so it's not that one. Previous expenditures associated with a market test and that anytime I see previous costs anything that was before that means it's a sunk cost. So I don't even have to read the rest of it. And so it's going to be, that's something we don't include as a sunk cost. And then so we know C, the value of a building owned by the firm that will be used for this project. 
we would include that because it could be an opportunity cost. The building could be used for something else and that would be charged as a cost to the project you're evaluating. And D, a decline in the sales of an existing product provided that decline is directly attributable to this project. And that's actually that cannibalization. And that's something that we include. And then E, the salvage value of assets used for the project that will be recovered at the end of the project's life. And we do include that and we will look at an example of that in a question later on. Okay, so let's look at question four. So it looks like we have a lot of data here. So Tossig Technologies is considering two potential projects, X and Y. In assessing the project's risks, the company estimated the beta of each project versus both the company's other assets and the stock market, and it also conducted thorough scenario and simulation analyses. This research produced the following data. And so you've got expected MPV, standard deviation, the project beta, and then the correlation of the project cash flows with cash flows from currently existing projects. And so the question down here is which of the following statements is correct? And the first one, A, Project X has more standalone risk than Project Y. Well, standalone risk is measured by standard deviation, which is here. And it says X has more, oh, I didn't want it to be that thick. Let's see if that changes it. Wow, okay, that changed a lot. Okay, so Project X has $100,000 standard deviation and Project Y has $150,000 standard deviation. So in all reality, Project Y has more standalone risk than Project X because it's higher. So this one's incorrect. So the problem is with the word more, and if it said less, it would be true. So it's not that one. And then B says Project X has more corporate or within firm risk than Project Y. Well, that's measured by this part right here. Cash flows are not correlated or cash flows are highly correlated. And so something that's going to be more risky would be something that has cash flows that have that are highly correlated. So over here, Project Y actually has more corporate or within firm risk than Project X. And what they said here, the problem with it is they said more and it should actually be the word less. And so that one's not correct. So if you reverse those words, it would be correct. And then if we look at C, Project X has more market risk than Project Y. Well, market risk is measured by this beta. And so we can see that, well, 1.4, the project beta, that is greater than 0.8. And that means that Project X has more market risk than Project Y. So that one actually is the answer, letter C, because it's true. And then D, Project X has the same level of corporate risk. Well, that's not true because, because of what we just looked at. One's highly correlated and one's not correlated. And then E, Project X has the same market risk as Project Y. Well, we see that the two betas are different, 1.4 versus 0 0.8. So that one's not true. And so let's look at question five. Langston Labs has an overall composite weighted average cost of capital of 
which reflects the cost of capital for its average asset. And remember, that's what weighted average cost of capital, this is the defini definition for it. Its assets vary widely in risk, and Langston evaluates low risk projects with a WAC of 8% average risk projects at 10% and high risk projects at 12%. The company is considering the following projects. Which set of projects would maximize shareholder wealth? And so if we look at the different levels of risk, we can see that we've got high risk, average, low risk. And then we're going to look at the return as well. So for the high risk project, we're going to use what they said right here, 12%. So I need to compare that to 12%. And I'm just going to write down all the comparisons we should make. So for high risk, it's twice. So I'm going to put this down here too, versus 12%. For average risk project, they said that we would use 10%. So this one would be versus 10% and that's the only average risk project and then the low risk projects is said that we should use 8% so I'm going to write versus 8% down here and here so what I want to basically analyze is are the expected returns greater than the weighted average cost of capital because if they are those are the projects that we want to accept. If it's less than the weighted average cost of capital, then we don't, we want to reject those projects. So 15 is greater than 12, and so that's good. We would accept it. 12 is greater than 10 for project B, so we would want to accept that one. 11 is less than 12, so for project C, we would want to reject that one. 9 for project D is greater than 8, so I would want to accept that one. And 6 is less than 8 for project E, and so I would want to reject that one. So it looks like I've got A, B, and D. So that looks like answer C, A, B, and D. And so those are the projects that would add value or maximize shareholder wealth.